Welcome to part one of this tutorial on how to make resin ocean art using real sand and plaster. My name's Michelle Tracy. So I begin by mixing some plaster with water. I'm using Jetty O Light Plaster from Pebio and that's a bit of a tongue twister. The consistency was too wet and sloppy so I just left it sitting in the cup for a little bit longer to thicken up and harden just so I could get a more rocky textural look. The thing is you've got to work really quickly because it dries within minutes when it gets to that stage. Just using a toothpick now to just create some lines and carve out a few pieces. I'm kind of just winging it. I don't have a reference so it's all good. Now these are just some dried up pieces from my previous painting. Um, you can see the colour difference how white they are compared to the wet ones. So I always know when it's dry because it's white like that. Now that the plaster has dried for a few days, I'm ready to lay down some acrylic washes. I'm using a grey mix, a grey and black mix made from burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I use equal parts, it's a one to one ratio and I get a perfect neutral grey, very easy. And I'm using yellow ochre and a green mix. This time I'm just using washes like I would watercolour, it's a real throwback to when I first started out in watercolours. So. Um, it's kind of natural for me to do this. It's good because um, the washes allow for the cracks to show through and um, the paint can seep into them and it can darken the cracks which is exactly what you want. So I'm just emphasizing them and slowly building up the layers. And now for some gold metallic paint. I love my metallics. It's going on here again. So I'm just scraping it along the surfaces so it just catches it and also adding a bit of silver metallic paint too. These little pieces will be stuck down by the resin when I do pour that. Now for the sand. The first cup I've lightened the sand with white acrylic paint and I'm mixing it with craft PVA glue. The second cup is just natural sand that mixed with the craft PVA glue and the third cup I'm mixing gold metallic paint acrylic paint that I used on the rocks and also adding a little bit of PVA glue to that one, not as much. So I immediately start applying the first cup of sand. This is my dry sand look. So this is the lighter sand and it's a bit coarse so I didn't add as much glue to it because I wanted it to be thicker and more, more sand on it and then I'll sprinkle some sand over it as well. So this here is the second cup. This is the darker natural sand and you can see that it's a bit wetter because that's going to be my wet sand. It's wetter because I added more PVA glue to it. It has less sand in that mix compared to that lighter sand. So now I'll place the rocks so they stick to that glue. And then of course my favourite crystals, oh my god, lapis crystals are coming on here along with plenty of shells all along that shoreline, washed up shells, washed up crystals, here they come. Speaking of which, here's the gold metallic sand ready to be placed. It really, because it's darker, it, it looks like clumps of wet sand but it's sparkly. You can't really see it from this angle but it's shimmery and it's quite grainy so I like the texture. There's not much glue in there. So now I'm just repeating the same process on the other side, starting with that light sand, spreading it on until I'm happy with it. I want some of that rock exposed, some of it covered. I feel a bit like Edward Scissorhands at times with these two spatulas going. <laughs> also tip, tie your hair back, don't be like me, need I say why. I love this part, it really brings it to life. So same crushed up shells, same sand going on the dry areas. There's my crystals. Going to throw in some quartz crystals as well soon. There's the gold metallic paint, you can see the shimmer. And I'm being sure to push those crystals right down into the sand so that they will stick to that glue. Not exactly sure what my plan is for that little peak there but I'm going to whack some of that gold on it. I think that'll look nice and the water will go over some of it so it'll shine show through underneath. Maybe it's like a crystal island or something. I'm just placing some of that glue down 
where I want the crystals on there because the gold paint didn't have much glue in it. Okay, time to put this in the sun and let it dry for a couple of days. It was really cold overnight so I actually gave my resin bottles a warm bath before I poured them. That way they <laughs> were at the correct temperature and they would perform perfectly and they did. I can be a bit sensitive to smells and chemicals so that's why I love art resin. I use it all the time. I don't need to wear a mask or worry about the air, the fumes in the air. I'm mixing turquoise luster here and the first one was breakfast at Tiffany's and titanium white from Just Resin. Now that my resin has sit for 15 minutes to thicken, time for the fun. I start pouring it. I immediately applied the white straight away because I wanted it to blend in with that clear layer. Now this is where the action really happens. I've tilted my board up. I've got it propped up on a box so that it flows in the direction of water and I'll blow it while it's still propped up. And then if I, I wanted to angle it in the direction of the water so I've just propped up that one corner and it looks like it's behaving well. I always blow my waves out with a heat gun and then I use a blowtorch to go over the entire piece to pop out any bubbles and then I'll use a toothpick just to pick out any dust. You can see there's a lot of work going into this piece. There will be a further two layers of resin going onto it so that's why I prefer to use a high quality resin because all the time I take to make these I want them to last and art resin won't fade. It's actually one of the best on the market or the best on the market for non-yellowing and non-fading. Toothpicks are really handy for manipulating those white waves. So that completes part one of this tutorial. I'll let it dry overnight so it's hard enough to pour the second and third coats in part two. So stay tuned. Thank you. Just before we go, please be sure to leave any feedback or suggestions, anything else in the comments. I love reading them all. Thank you so much. See you soon.